and welcome back YouTube to a brand new year 2023 happy new year to everyone and a very cramped garage today it's not the nicest weather I've got to do this indoors if you've seen my garage before it's not my garage it's my in-laws garage I get about a third of it they get back half of it so um, they get that bit. I'm very appreciative. I've got two bikes in here. I was only meant to have one. So I've, I've kind of taken over one part of it. So very happy with that. Now, what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be sorting out one of my mess ups from last year. Um, I started doing videos last year. Um, one for me, I think I said, I think I'm doing more for me, but two, hopefully they're helping someone out there. Now, Last year I'd done a video about changing from a ZX6R J2, the rear shock, to a new 2021 rear shock. Now, like a donut, I had done a load of editing, showed how it's done, and then deleted all of that before I uploaded it. I even edited it the whole lot video. So what I ended up doing is just basically a show and tell, having this in my hand, showing this, basically describing how it's done. Now, I thought I'd done quite a good job of that, or a rescue job, but unfortunately, people still ask me some questions. They still said, look, they're a bit of a donut when it comes to um, installs, bolts, nuts, that kind of thing. Can I do this? You know, is it that simple? And I thought, you know what? I've not done a good job on this because this is my fault. It is that simple and I need to show that. So one of the things on my list was to put this back onto the J2 and take this off and then do it all over again, okay? Now for the Eagle Eyed people, they will know that this is not a J2 shock. This is an A1P shock. If you want to know why the A1P shock's on there, you'll have to watch my other videos quick story I've got an A1P fell in love with this I was going to sell this I pulled Maxton suspension that all went across onto the A1P when I bought it because it only had 1900 miles on it that's why this shock's in such good condition however I decided to keep this bike and I've started doing some track evenings on it so I wanted to upgrade the rear shock um, because it was cheap um, and we'll go through that uh, later on in the video uh, but by the magic of editing this is going to be back on here and this is going to be in my hands there we are magic of editing fantastic so here we have our 2021 ZX6R rear shock absorber so let's just imagine we bought this and put this to the side let's just go through the tools that we're going to need for the job first of all okay and i'm going to try and show you how to do it on your own rather than uh having two people two, two people is easier um, um because you've got to get from two sides but i'll show you how i do it uh, just on my own so uh let's go through the tools that we've got we need 17 mil spanner we need a socket ideally with a, a long reach bar we need with that a 14 mil and a 17 mil and also just a, a four mil I've got two four mils there just to loosen um, the left hand side of the fairing and that is all you need uh, to do this um, and some rag and actually I would probably look at getting some grease Just some multi-purpose grease and what I also do while it's out if you've got one brilliant get yourself a grease gun this one was super cheap off eBay I literally just put that in it I think this was something like 10 15 quid it's very cheap uh, plus also underneath on these we're very very lucky we've got four grease points um, to uh, lube the uh, bearings so um, yeah it's worth doing that while the shock is off because it makes it easier to get to so let's get on with the install so we've got one bolt here that we need to undo and that uh, removes the lower shock 
and also because we've got to get the um, shock out and uh, put the new one in and I just know that loosening this bolt here or removing this bolt and then on this dog bone bar it comes down and just underneath uh, if I can get that in just underneath just that bolt there if we can loosen that because you need to loosen that for this for the other side rod to actually move round all right so that's why I just undo the this fairing I just undo that bolt this bolt and this bolt and then I can manipulate this side of the fairing so I can get to this bottom bolt before you do anything the hardest thing about this job is getting it on a decent stand okay you cannot have it on a paddock stand because as soon as you take that off the real wheel will just fall down so if you have one and this is why I bought an ABBA Superbike because it is so good that it is just standing in the middle and you can buy adapters so I can work on the faults. So you can't use a paddock stand. Some people have said about putting um, um, axle stands underneath here. I personally don't like that. Um, you need to find a way to support it and I would advise using one of these. Once I've done that, I then wedge something underneath so the wheel will not drop down. Okay, so let's get on with it. So I'm really sorry because we're mega, mega cramped here. So hopefully you, you know how to take the left hand fairing off. So I've got a bolt just at the bottom here. Now these are already loose because I've, I've undone them. And once I've taken them out, I'll just show you where I've loosened. I'm gonna put that one down. We've got this one at the top. I'm not gonna speed this up because I want people to be able to see it. So, we've literally just done done the bottom. This is a pattern fairing, so it doesn't fit as well. So, I've literally undone that bottom, so that's nice and loose, so I can manipulate that. If you wanna take it completely off, you can. I just don't bother. All I need is basically access to this bottom bolt that I was talking about, okay? Now, next bolt is this, which is a 14 mil bolt. Now, the great thing about this bolt I've always found is you don't have to hold the other end. It seems that once you've loosened it, and as I say, so once I've loosened it, and this is quite loose because I've already undone it, you can literally, these bolts are actually pretty decent and not too stressful. If you do need to hold it, just get another one the opposite side. I think that's a 12 or a 14. Uh, I will just double check for you. So what we're gonna do, just take that bolt out first. Yeah, it looks like a 12. Uh, just double check. Yeah, so it's a 12. Now, this nut is the one that we need to take off. And this is our 17 mil spanner. Now what I do is I put the spanner like so, uh, or fit it. Yeah, to take it off it's this way around because it's going to go up. So I manipulate the spanner and get it to hold on itself like so. I then change to a 17mm bolt and I'm going to bring this back round and I'll show you the bolt that we're looking at. So there it is, it's that bolt. That bolt there. And what I do, if I put that through, you can see that I've got my thing on it here. 
and I'm going to take this around the other side sorry for all the movement so we go back to here so you can see what this does when I twist it round so, so I'm undoing the bolt now and you can see it hopefully that span has just moved because I can feel it holding on right if it comes off don't panic because that means it's probably loose now and what I can do is I can hold that no it's not enough so off it's quite a long bolt right that ends off and all I'm going to do is just push that through so hopefully you can then see that so I've just pushed this through you saw that come through and what's happened now is the other side I've just dropped this side down yeah now that basically gives us enough purchase to actually get the bottom of the shock out now the next bolt we're doing is basically the top of the shock that is a 12 mil socket you literally just get your 12 mil in and I haven't done it up tight so I've just taken it off. Once it's uh, like loosened, you should be able to hold the bolt from the back end and undo the nut like so. Once that nut's undone, hold the back end of the shock because it's going to drop down. And I oh, can't get the bolt, so I'll just let that drop. Now I'm just going to let that in place and I'm just going to move the camera back slightly so I need a bit more room. Now what I do is I lift it up, I twist it. Now that's the bit that's given us room with that bar slightly moved. If that bar was in place we would not be able to slide it like so. It just lifts out. It's just as simple as that. So here we have both the shocks next to each other and a tripod leg. Sorry guys. Uh, working with what I've got in such a tight space. Now, are these a straight swap? No is the answer. And the reason they're not is if I can get around the tripod is because of this bottom part. This, the original, is two millimeters wider than this. So if you try and put this in, it will not fit. It is too thin. Now, I was lucky enough to go on a forum, and this is the only reason I attempted it, because of the guy on the forum, and I will put his name up, uh, because I've forgotten I've done it in the uh, original video absolute superstar of telling you how this can be done very very simply so basically this part at the bottom here is two millimeters wider now why is that wider uh, than the new one obviously I've slightly changed them but they haven't actually changed this part I don't believe now, what we can do is, this is an oil seal, uh, sorry, grease seal. So this grease seal fits in, but it doesn't fit flush. So basically, this is going onto the edge. We can take this grease seal out. We can take the other grease seal out. We then have some 
um, tubular spacer, okay? And this tubular spacer uh, is, I think, 32 mil. I will put the exact size up. I haven't done my research again. Now, what I've basically read is a lot of people, and I'm gonna come back here, is what a lot of people have done is they've taken this two mil spacer and you can see it doesn't fit in the middle. So they've then taken a grinder and ground that down, okay? Because this part will actually fit over the other bit. It's this spacer and those uh, grease seals that are actually stopping it. So people have ground this down and I hated that idea because I know that if I take a grinder to that, I won't get it flat. I haven't got the tools and I'm gonna mess it right up. So the guy who'd already done it said, actually, Kawasaki are really good because you can buy one of them. Which is for the six um, for the uh, 2021, and the difference is, is it's two mil smaller. Okay, it's also exactly the same diameter radius. Can't remember. Let me go back to school, and that fits directly in here. Plus, also these seals, grease seals a flush fitting and they fit over here and they fit directly into what we've just taken these out of so these are the same size as that yeah they've just not got this out apart so if you buy these two bits and this it's a straight bolt in bolt out and it is as simple as that that, that it's that simple it's just getting these parts and knowing these parts. So you can buy them from Fowler's, uh, you can buy them from Kawasaki Direct. Now, while I was doing this, I decided to complicate the matter and put a new bearing in. However, I've not got a bearing pusher or puller and I, I got the old one out and then couldn't get a new one in. So I had to take the whole of the bottom bit out and take it and get it um fitted by a mechanic and that's what really caught me up other than that this is literally a 15 minute to half hour job if you don't bother putting a bearing in so just put a bit of grease on very hard to see and we just slide that through yeah now these i might have to pull this back so i can see because this is going to be quite difficult but if i can show you what i'm doing so Basically, these are going over this and sliding in. And they've got to be flush. So I'm just pushing hard. And then I'm going to do the one at the back as well. Yeah, so I'll see whether I can do it while, while I'm filming. If I cut, I kind of know what I'm doing at the back. Yeah, that slid on nice. I have to work that a little bit more when I go and put the shock in. But once that's done, I'm gonna wait until I bolt it up and then I'm gonna put the grease through because you'll see if I, I just put the grease through now, it should spurt out the so Yeah, it's gonna push the grease, um, grease holders out. So, yeah, okay. So, let's get the shock in place. So, we're gonna slide the shock in and we're gonna come at it from this side. You can take the uh, guard off, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, guard, uh, the side rear mug guard. So I just slide it in and on something what we stuck on so I just need to so I'm stuck so 
so I don't like to push. There we go. So it come down a little bit lower. There we go. Don't like to shove it. Shove it. Now, I like to get the bottom end in first. And the reason being is I think that's more tough because we've got to manipulate those um, grease um, grease seals. So, just going to bring the camera down. So, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pinch it so it slides on. So I'm trying to get the back end in first, or the front end in first, and then slide it backwards, which will push these. Also, because I've pumped it with grease, will be harder. So I may have to take it out. It's going on. Got that in. That back seals. It's nearly there. I've made that job harder because I've pumped it with grease. It's a bit of a, bit of a fight but to get those grease things in. Right. What I'm going to do, yeah, it will go. I'm going to steady the ship. There we go, we're, we're there. So, we remember which bolt we've got. Now, if you get them switched round, you've got a, a short one and a long one. It's the long one at the bottom. And that just pops through, like so. got to tighten that up okay so you can see that I've done that hand tight and then I'll be able to just nip it um, and we'll do that to talk and then let's go up and do the front one uh, the top one so I've got the uh, front one to do let's just move that around a bit more so you can see it and come from the back it's quite hard to do with a camera in front. I need to lift it a bit. There we go. That's on. Just need to move the tripod out of the way. And then we can do that up. Okay, now we've got to remember at the bottom we've got to put those uh, dog bones back on. So I'm just going to put that bolt back through. We go back down the bottom. So we've got this bolt to go back through. We basically just lift up the other side, the other arm, and push the bolt through. That's it. And then we can just put the nut on the opposite end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the camera there for that angle, and we do this nut up first. Uh, and we'll do it up to talk and I'll show you again how I do it on my own because I found that this particular bolt If I spin it get to a certain point and then this side will just spin. So sorry about that um, Battery run out just while I was filming um, I was just doing basically I put this bolt through um, And as I was saying that if I try and do that up it just spins so this side has got to be held and when doing this other bottom one up down here, the other side has to be held. So I'll just show you how I do that as one-handed. So, um, oh, just on my own rather than having someone else here. What we need to do is we're gonna actually use this part of the frame to stop this uh, spanner spinning. Now what you have to do it's just like just turn it turn it and get that spanner on that's now on that side and it's resting 
against so it will stop it from turning now I'm going to go across and just do it up I'm not going to talk here at the moment so. so you can probably see it slightly moving the spanner you've got to try and keep pressure on it so it doesn't move there we go now that's done up what I'm going to do is just take the socket off and I'm going to get my torque wrench and I'm going to torque it up now once you've torqued it what you'll find is you can't get the bloody thing out so once you torque it slightly go the opposite way so like undoing it and it will just give it uh, a slight break from underneath here and you'll be able to pull it off so I've just got my Kawasaki book out uh, my manual and it says uh, suspension linkage rod to swing arm which is that one on an F model 59 on a GJ an A model 34 newton meters so adjusted that to 34 if you come around we've still got that spanner in in place get it on there we go now just going to put it in reverse and just wiggle a little bit and that should give enough for me to be able to get that out is it yeah yeah I'll be able to get that off from that so there we go that's that one done let's get uh, I'm not sure which one next we'll have a look Struggle. There we go. So the next one I'm going to do is the lower shock, and I've just looked, and it says 59. Actually, all the rest are 59. So I'm pleased I've left them to the end, so I ain't got messed about. So all I've done is just nipped it as much as I can with that, and then oh, use the torque wrench because this these ones on the shock they don't seem to need to um, have anything on the other side you can give them the other side doesn't seem to go uh, move god dear that's pressure on my back god. christ i'm getting weak the crap out of it I've set at 59 I'm gonna stop there because I'm not it feels like I'm going too far whether that's something wrong with my bolt or whatever but I'm stopping now because that is that felt very tight to me so I'm just going to leave that uh, and then do this back one Try. this is what I was saying about manipulating the bottom part and always try and do them up first with right so I've got to get the and you'll see this is going to come round it's actually going to hit up underneath here and lock off underneath the engine so there, it's gone into position maybe me maybe I'm just weak maybe 
I've had too many pies over Christmas. There you go. Right, so then what I do, just go onto it, kick back a little bit, and just jerk it a bit just to loosen that and get that off. There we go. That's that done. So that's the two bottoms done. Now we just do the top, top of the shock. Top of the shock. Again, this is uh, 59 newton meters. So I'll just get on the... Just check that. Oh, this one wants to move a little bit. Let's see if I can grab it. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is set up, I've done it before, but sometimes it doesn't need it. This one obviously does. I'll set up another little spanner to stop it. So this is 12 mil. so what way are we going? Let me just check. So it's going to be going down, I believe. So currently I'm just holding it. Right, so come off of that and go on to the torque. First, a little bit. Is that giving that enough slack? Yeah, and then that's off. What I might do is I might try that on the bottom and I'll come back to you and let you know whether it was slipping at the back, whether that was me, because it felt like I was crushing the nuts out of it, but those actually felt correct. You know, you, you kind of know when something's not right, especially if you've done it a few times and you've taken those nuts off and so yeah, I'll do that and then I'll come back to you. So that's all tightened up, all done. What I'm gonna do now, is just gonna show you when I grease them, I now basically grease all of the nipples and you're gonna see grease come out of here. And that's basically what you want. You want it, there you go. So you know that it's coming through. There's another one just here. And there's also another one. Can we get through there? I don't know whether you can see my finger just there. It's because I've got a light on. Yeah, I think you can just see it at the back. So there's three there, and then there's one on the other side. I might have to edit this, take the light off and everything to get it in. Uh, let's go back from here. Uh, can I get my hand under and it's just there and that does the swing arm I think, I think it's such a benefit because one um, bearing that I can't do is a swing arm bearing all the other bearings have been done when I actually took that out and couldn't get the bearing in because I took the whole light out had all of them done. So every single bearing has been done on this apart from swing arm bearing. And it's purely because I haven't got the tools to take the swing arm off. Uh, I'm unsure whether I need to, to be honest. So uh, I'm happy with that. Right, let me tidy up and I'll come back to you. So I wanna have a chat about a couple of things. So we are finished, we are done. <clears throat> a couple of things that I forgot. First of all, there's not four grease nipples, there's five grease nipples. And to be honest, I didn't show you um, me greasing my nipples because I didn't think that'd be appropriate. So uh, you can grease your own nipples, okay guys? Um, now, also doing this back up, you know, is literally one, two, three, done, job done. 
So why would we want to do that? Why would we want to take our old shock and put a new shock on that like <clears throat> it'll fit from a 2000, this, this will work from a 2013 to a 2021. And you only need to buy those um, different cylinder that's two mil shorter and those two grease seals. That's it, that's all you need. I was really lucky. That uh, rear shock I got was from a guy who builds race bikes. So you give him your bike, and most people were giving him uh, R6s or ZX6Rs that were brand spanking new. He was taking the shocks off and then putting K-Tech, Maxton, whatever on there, and then selling the old shocks back, selling the old shocks or new shock, so he could get some uh, money back into the project. So I was fortunate enough, I got a brand new shock for £150, that shock. And you know, we're talking like 21 years technology that it's moved on. So it's gonna be better. The other great thing that I've also seen is a lot of people have put <coughs> um, K-Tech springs on them. So they are basically getting them sprung to weight. Now the great thing I would say about that shock, it's got a huge range of dampening. Um, I have literally, from memory, only got it on about, I think there's three turns, at the, um, three turns I think it was, I've, I've got about one turn, or even half a turn at the bottom uh, for rebound and compression, I think was something I could take, but there's huge amount in there. Now I know that that spring, because of the KTEC website, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it actually tells you what the standard spring is, and, and I'm pretty sure it said 100 newton meters. Now I'm, um, I think that's for around about 14 kilo, 14, 15 kilo people. Uh, <clears throat> I'm 12 kilo, 12 and a half probably with my gear on, 13 if I've not had a dump, you know, so 100 newton meters. It's not too oversprung, probably I need a, a 90 or a 95, but at the moment I've not got that 90 quid and it is literally just a case of un unwinding it, bottom part comes off, put a new spring on. It is gonna be that simple. So when I've got the money, I will do that. At the moment, I'm just gonna focus a little bit more on the bike. So that's why we would do it, because we're updating our bike, it's pure and simple. For 150 quid, I, can't, I mean, you're gonna to struggle to get a, um, a service done. I know uh, some companies, Maxton certainly won't touch your old shock. Um, they were even unsure what they would do with that because I asked them if I sent them that shock what could they do could they uh, put new uh, dampening stuff in there and update you I don't know the ins and outs of them um, but they pretty much said no because if it then certain seals if they pop or whatever they then get the blame and it has to go back to them and la di la di la di they only really want to deal with their stuff um, and like stuff that's meant to be taken apart that's not meant to really I believe so <clears throat> there we go uh, very very simple very easy to do and over the next couple of months what I'm gonna try and do is um, show you what I've done to the bikes well you've seen that on the videos but show you how I've done that so things like the Brembo master cylinder um, it is a, um, a universal 22 mil um, very easy to, to fit that. Hardest bit is working out the reservoir and what tubing to use and what uh, clips to use. And I got leaks and you know, and you go through different things because there's the different nipples off, off the top of my head, Brembo's six mil, uh, Kawasaki's eight mil. So how do you get a pipe that fits between them? And can you fit the Brembo reservoir? Well, I couldn't, so uh, yeah. All of those kind of things to try and make it simple so you can literally bolt stuff on, bolt it off. And even, I'm gonna go into the internals, everything I've done um, and how to. So hopefully it helps someone. And I did do a four year review on this. I can't thank enough people watching it because I know it's a long video. It's an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, but I had, I think, a lot to say about them. I want to do my A1P because a lot of people think that A1P is just um, um, basically the 636 version of this. Uh, yeah, but no. 
I, that's all I can say. Yeah, but no. Um, but that's going to take me quite a while because uh, this one took me eight weeks. So yeah, let's get those uh, little bits. Uh, I've got to do some surfacing work as well. So all of those videos to come. I can't thank enough all of the new subscribers, all the watchers uh, from all around the world. Absolutely amazing, all the questions. I'm in agony, absolute agony uh, because I've been working in such a tight spot and bending over. But right, I'm gonna go now because I chat too much. But remember what I always say, guys, these are your own responsibility. I'm not a professional. If you like watching me play with my nuts, fantastic. If you wanna copy how I play with my nuts, brilliant. If you've got no idea on how to play with your own nuts, take them to a professional, pay them money, and the professional will play with your nuts for you. All right, guys, check your nuts. <laughs>